think the best part about this video today is that I could pronounce to tally like 15 different ways and just trigger all the people. That's probably the, the, my top five. Just that's it. Video over. One through five. Trigger all the people. Peace. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. And in today's video, I wanna talk about my top five features for Totally. T Totally. Totally? But anyways, if you're not familiar with Totally, it is an add-on that you can use that runs right beside Plex and gives you way more information on your Plex media server. It's very, very useful. Some people still ask me though, say, Jason, why would you use that? Everything is in Plex. Why? Do you care about any of the information on Totuli? Full disclosure, this software has a bunch of stuff. I mean, it does a lot of stuff. It, it tracks a lot of things, gets you a lot of different information that you can utilize in multiple different ways. And there's no way that a top five video is going to be able to cover everything that it does. But what I did though, is I just tried to pull together some top five things that I used most often or in the past that have really been important to me. And I wanna just lay it out and say, look, these are at least five good reasons that you'd want to use Tatuli. And I really try to focus on things that you really just don't have an option to do with Plex itself, something you really do need this add-on software to get working. So with all the word vomit out of the way, let's jump right on in to number one. This one hits home for me, and that is IP tracking, or just really user tracking in general. This is not only important because you can track to see what most active users are on your system, which is actually kind of sort of a number five for me, but my thing is IP tracking. It allows you to find out if somebody is treating your Plex login like your Netflix. Scenario numero uno. You share your library with a friend or a family member. Said friend or family member shares their Plex login with their friend or family member. And then they share it with their friend or family member. Next thing you know, you got like 10 people logging into your server, all underneath one user that you shared your library with. Now on a lower scale, let's say two or three streams, you might see this in the actual Plex dashboard, see them playing multiple files at the same time, or maybe not whatever. Point is you can see them actually playing these files and you don't actually know that these are coming from different locations. But if you go on to tool, you can actually see what IP addresses are being used and you can track that. And this definitely comes in use if you find out two or three or four or multiple whatever IP addresses are being used through your media library. Maybe you want to share it with your friend but you don't wanna share it with your friend's friends. You notice that happening, you send them a quick text, be like WTF, they're like, sorry, and then you threaten to shut them off if they don't fix the situation. Number two, alerts or notifications. For the purpose of this video, I will demonstrate using webhooks to connect my Plex server to my Discord server, which shameless plug, I do have a Discord server. Follow the links down below if you wanna find out how to get there. Now, of course, there are many different options for notifications, but Discord, Twitter, IFTTT, these are all options that you can use. But with Discord, you can set it up to automatically post any kind of updates that you choose. This could be playing a movie, stopping a movie, pausing a movie, transcoding, a, whatever. And it will automatically go and post Post those updates to whatever you choose it to post it to. So in this particular example, every time I stopped, played, paused, etc., this this TV show, it posted it automatically to Discord. Now this could be very useful or very annoying, depending on how you set it up and depending on how obsessed you are with your content. But it's just it's totally up to you but it's an option. But my point is that this is a very robust system that you can actually configure to your heart's desire and find out all kinds of things about your server in real time. So definitely useful. And number three, pruning your data. What I mean by pruning your data is deleting stuff, which I know that's it's like a bad word around these parts, but some people might want to prune their own data. You go, you realize, why is it that I have Gilligan's Island on my server and literally nobody has ever watched Gilligan's Island? Well, with Tatula, you can actually go in, you can look at this data and you can find out if nobody ever plays it, then why do you want the whole TV series to be there? So if you're filling up that four terabyte hard drive and you either can't or don't want to add any more storage to it, this can be a very useful tool to go through and delete movies, TV shows, music, etc. Which brings me to number four, server statistics. 
Now this actually boils down to two things for me. One, I touched base a little bit on earlier in the video. The first one, of course, being the most active users. You can actually go in there and see who the most active user is, and then you can do a little bit more research. Maybe see if they're transcoding when they shouldn't be, or maybe sending them a quick text message. Say, geez, calm down, okay? This is, this is an i5 server. It's, it's, it's not very powerful. Just, just chillax. Or furthermore, you can go in and you can see what the most popular platform is as far as a client goes. And this could be very useful, especially if you see, let's say Android is being used 90% of the time. Android might be capable of direct playing videos a lot easier than something like, let's say, an Xbox. Now, every platform is gonna have different ones that they support natively, so that's gonna be something you're gonna to wanna to look up on Google. If you have a specific platform and you're trying to fine tune and tweak your server in order to meet the masses of their needs as easily as possible, Google is your friend, but still, it is a good tool to have if you are trying to fine tune your server. And last but not least, is really kind of for a multi-purpose server. If you have planned downed maintenance or you have planned tasks, let's say cron jobs or something running that you have to run or you want to run every single day or whatever, let's just say that these tasks are going to be either A, resource intensive, which means they might bog down your server and give somebody a negative experience on Plex if they did want to log in and watch something, or B, you just totally want to bring everything down and reboot the server just for generic maintenance. Well, with Tatuli, you actually have the option to go in and see when within the last, let's say, 30 days, you can go in and see what hours during the day are most used. So let's say, hypothetically, if two or three o'clock in the morning, literally nobody has ever watched anything, you know that is a safe time to reboot or do some kind of resource intensive task with your server. Something that I find very useful, especially if you want to do maintenance like upgrades on your software. Software. Not saying that I upgrade all the time. I'm terrible at upgrading. But if I were somebody who liked to upgrade stuff like I should, this would be a perfect tool to find out when I could do it. Also, I'd have to be somebody who cared. I'd be like, I'm sorry, it's down. Get over it. Hashtag don't care. Now, like I said in the beginning of this video, like Tatuli has a lot of stuff. There are a lot of different features, a lot of things you can do with it, and it's really hard to cover in a top five video. So I know this is kind of cheating, but there are three honorable mentions that I want to mention. And I know it's cheating. It's like, it's more like a top eight, but I, I have to do it. One was actually from the Discord server, so I have not tested it, but there is a Tatuli app that you can download on your phone so you can remote manage everything directly from your phone or tablet or whatever. They said they like it, so I want to throw that in because it actually sounds really cool and it sounds like a, a project that I'm going to get into. So honorable mention number one. Number two, library statistics. Maybe you want to flex a little bit on somebody you know, or maybe you're just curious how many movies, TV shows, seasons, or episodes you have total on your entire server. Movie or library statistics is an easy way to kind of grab all that data, put it in one place, and easily see everything you have on your server number-wise. So you be like, yeah, bro, yeah, yeah, I got, I got like 4,000 movies. Like, how many do you have? Pfft, only three? Thought, you're so weak, bro. You're so weak. You, you, those are rookie numbers, man. You really need to pump those numbers up, bro. And the third honorable mention, again, I have not tested, but they proved it over the Discord channel, which I thought was super, super cool, and that is Siri integration. So you could be like, you know, hey, Siri, what is X user doing? And it's like, oh, they're playing this movie. I don't know how I would ever use that, but it sounds actually really cool. Something I want to play with because I have an iPhone and I, I kind of want to mess with that. So honorable mention number three, right? But that's it for today, guys, my top five features for Tatuli. If you use this software and you have favorite features that you use all the time for whatever reason, please post them down below. This is one of those things where I've explored it, I've tested, and I've, I've found new things like the whole Siri integration without even knowing it existed. So if you have stuff I didn't even mention, throw them down below. I know there's a lot, but I can't wait to read those. But if you have any other questions, comments, or concerns, of course, post those down below. Thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a great day.